vemos con, con We are very worried about the changes that are happening with the climate. And these are the potatoes that have survived change through the ages. This is about marketing biodiversity. We want to look for ways of developing added value that also is a stimulus to conserving the biodiversity. To improve breeding stock, we have to get materials from Peru. You see, it's the invaluable legacy of Mother Nature. These farmers in the Andean highlands are the descendants of the Incas. They still use the same methods of cultivation as their forebears five centuries ago. These slopes are the home of the potato, now the third most popular crop in the world. Incredibly, while just a handful of varieties of potato are grown worldwide, the Andean farmers still grow over 3,000 varieties. They are the guardians of diversity, preserving the characteristics that have helped them to survive and might well help to maintain the global yield. Most potato varieties were developed to suit different environments. These terraces mimic the many microclimates of the Peruvian highlands. A nature-friendly strategy that has given us a crop worth over $50 billion annually. Modern industrial agriculture is brutally reductive, banishing all but a handful of species suitable for intensive monocrop cultivation. The Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations estimates that only one in ten crops that have been developed in the past are still being farmed today. In 2008, food prices around the globe rocketed by an average of about 40%, sparking riots and leaving governments shaken as a result. We need to take that red flag very, very seriously. We are not prepared to feed our growing population. In the US, the Obamas are leading by example, proudly breaking ground in the White House lawn to grow organic produce for the presidential kitchen. They might do well planting the tuba from the Andes that is already transforming the lives of farmers everywhere. You can see this is a 13-inch long tuber. Huh? It's a sexy long potato, you can see. Huh? In this edition of Nature Inc, we focus on the spud. We unpeel its allure as we travel from the Andes to Asia and Africa and find the potato is far from being humble. The research centres of the Consultative Group on International Agricultural Research, CGIAR, have been working since the 1970s to protect a 10,000-year-old process of selective breeding to create the domestic crops consumed today. Lima, Peru is the home of the International Potato Center. We have under our guardianship the largest collection of potatoes in the world. While some argue that genetically modified foods are the answer to the food crisis, this gene bank is humankind's insurance. It houses over 4,000 natural varieties of potatoes developed by the Andean farmers. Each has different characteristics, such as heat and salinity tolerance. Some are adapted to short growing seasons and others to resisting diseases. For the last 10 years, potato production has increased at an average annual rate of 4.5% globally. Only wheat and maize are a bigger part of our diet. So the potato is critically important to food security, even in some unexpected places like Bangladesh. In 2007, Cyclone Cider hit Bangladesh and destroyed a rice crop worth 600 million US dollars. The price rose by 70%. 140 million people face starvation. The potato came to the rescue. That year, Bangladeshi farmers produced nearly 5 million tonnes of potatoes, while rice had to be imported because of the damage caused by the cyclone. In 2008, former rice farmers increased their production to 8 million tonnes. Compared to the rice grown in these flood-prone plots, 
farmers are finding that potatoes are more nutritious, faster growing, need less land and thrive in more difficult growing conditions than any other major crop. They provide up to four times as much complex carbohydrates per hectare as grain, better quality protein than rice and several vitamins. Sometimes we can get up to 80 kilos from this local red variety and it's worth more so it's a hundred times better for us. Bangladeshis are now torn between a local red variety that needs less fertilizer and has a higher heat tolerance and the diamond variety that offers higher yields but diamond seeds have to be imported from Europe at great expense and the variety requires extensive use of fertilizers and pesticides. Defects, because there are not only one, of this variety that we have seen all over Bangladesh are poor resistance to late blight, one, and a lot of common scab. This, you cannot sell this in the market, nobody will, will buy. One of the potato's drawbacks is that exploding demand means that potato seed, developed by multinational companies offering high yields, is increasing in price. Last year I had to spray pesticides four times, and I know a farmer who had to spray eight times. Most did it six times. We just don't know when disease might strike. Imported varieties are not necessarily the best ones to cope with local conditions. The potato experts are encouraging local farmers to use the red variety, developed by Bangladeshi farmers themselves. Those indigenous are this size. Resistance to high temperature, to drought, you can plant in October. And resistance to late blight also. We have already tested two years. It is resistance. So will you like it or no? In Bangladesh, the trend is to favour the tuba over rice. One kilo of rice has doubled in price over the past year and now costs about 58 cents, almost half the daily wage of an average worker. A kilo of potatoes sells for about 10 cents and it is much more nutritious. In the last decade, potato consumption per capita has risen from 7 to 24 kilos a year. Cereals supply up to 70% of dietary energy in many countries of Asia and Africa. In China, increasing demand for grain-fed meat has created the perfect storm. How to reduce dependence on grain, yet satisfy the dietary expectations of a prosperous country. It was Mao Zedong who, back in the 1970s, decided that the future of China was tied to the tuba from the Peruvian highlands. To fully understand its importance, we spoke to one of the leading scientists in the country, Dr. Song Jian, an architect of China's one child per family policy. Our population is 1.3 billion. Within the next two to three decades, it will increase to 1.5 or 1.6, and then we will stabilize. China now produces 500 million tons of crops. We will have a deficit of 100 million tons per year in 30 years. So the arduous mission for scientific community is to answer that. And we can do this with potatoes. China has become the world's largest potato and consumer by volume. Rice is still the traditional staple food, but the country has more than 20% of the world's population and only 7% of its arable land. And desertification and rapid urban sprawl is making inroads into that farmland. Potatoes need less land and water, and now China produces 70 million tonnes of potatoes per year. Annual per capita potato consumption has reached 40 kilograms, a five-fold increase in two decades. It's not just crisps. Dr. Chu has put together a book of potato recipes from across the country. Uh, we have more than 300 recipes in different regions. They're really integrated to the Chinese food culture. Yunnan province was once one of the poorest regions in China, but no longer. The government wants potatoes to account for half of its predicted food needs in the future. 
The trick has been to use rice paddies to grow potatoes when it's too cold for rice, giving the farmers a whole new crop to cash in on. Potatoes are very important for me. Every year I make more than 10,000 yuan from potatoes. Prices are stable and the harvest secure. Before our house was very small and we all had to sleep in the kitchen. Year by year, potatoes gave me more money and now I have a new, fully decorated house. One of the preferred varieties in southern China is Cooperation 88, developed with the help of scientists from the International Potato Center in Peru using genetic material developed by the Inca. China has no wild growing potatoes, so no natural gene pool. To improve breeding stock, we have to get materials from Peru. You see, it is an invaluable legacy of Mother Nature. And we see how the whole world is benefiting from the farmers who've protected the genetic diversity of the not so humble potato. It's estimated that an area the size of Australia will be needed to feed the world's growing population using today's agricultural methods and reliance on grain. In the quest for more land for crops, deforestation rates in sub-Saharan Africa are twice that of the rest of the world. The potato could be a solution.